Hello, my name is Estel Bathurst, and this is my wife, Kristen, and we're going to share about our journey that God's calling us to Malawi. And I have, I have been in the Abilene community my entire life. I have been born and raised on the farm, and I farmed most of my life. And part of my time after we got married, I did do some other agriculture-related businesses, but currently I'm farming with my dad and brother in Abilene. And so I'm going to first talk about our call. And I don't know if we have a picture of our family in the slideshow. If you can get it up, you can put the first slide up. We have five kids. There you go. Nope, no, it's not the first one. But Okay, I'll talk. It's fine. And so I'm going to call about our call. And so to talk about that, I first want to jump back about 15 year, years when Chris and I first were married. And I was actually the youth pastor at Zion Church. And I felt that God was calling us to go do missions. And I told my wife, I feel like God's calling us to go. And Kristen said, no, I'm not feeling that call. And I, I'm kind of a pushy guy, and I kept saying, I really think God's calling us to go. And she said, no. And so I, I backed off, realizing it was not God's time. And so we began our life, and we jumped forward about five or six years. Kristen came to me and said, okay, Estel, I think I'm ready to go now. And I said, um, no, I'm farming with my dad and brother now, and I love this, and I want to pass the farm to my boys, and this is what we're going to do the rest of our lives. And I said, no, we're not going. I'm sorry. So now you jump back about two years ago, some missionaries came to, to talk at our church, uh, the Shanks. They're an older couple, and I, I remember exactly where I was sitting, but they shared, and he said, we need Bible-believing Christians to go and help the church in Africa. And I, I said, no, Lord, I don't want to go. And I felt, I just felt the Holy Spirit saying, this time, Estel, God may be calling you to go. And they talked for an hour. I won't talk for an hour. They talked for a long time. So during that hour, I struggled with the Lord. And finally, I said, okay, Lord, Kristen's in the nursery with Ruth. She's not really hearing the message, I don't think. And so I'll ask Kristen one time after church if she feels the call to go, too. If she doesn't, I'm zipping my mouth, and I'm going to continue to farm. And so we got in, the church was over, and we got in the car, and I said, um, honey, I really feel like God's calling us to pray about going to Africa as missionaries, and she said she did too. So that is our call, and from that point on, we began to pray, seek wisdom. Uh, we decided to take a, a trip for three and a half weeks with our entire family a year later, so last winter we went for three and a half weeks, and during that time, um, we believed we believe God's calling us. I will say during that time, after flying with five kids to Malawi, that, that first night, my wife looked at me and said, what are we doing in Africa with five kids? This is ridiculous. <laughs> and we were both, you know, emotionally and physically exhausted. But at once we started doing ministry and seeing the need and feeling God continue to lead us, we believe this is what God has for us. And I was just going to mention the names and ages of our kids. We have twin um, 12 year old boys Landon and Layton and a nine year old boy Jackson and a six year old boy Malachi and Ruth is two so um, and I, the screen does not show anywhere is that correct I don't want to be making sense is it should oh there you, you guys can see it okay so you can go to the next slide and we're going to live in a town called Mangochi in the country of Malawi. The little red strip, their little narrow one, is Malawi. So it's small, but it's um, they still have about 14 million people that live in Malawi, so very densely populated. And you can go on to the next one. We will be joining Doug and Barb Miller um, with BIC US World Missions, and they have been ministering to the Yao people for almost 20 years. So that's who we are going to minister to are the Yao people. And the next one tells a little bit about the Yao people. They follow Islam, and they also have combined that with their traditional African beliefs about um, praying to the ancestors, spirits, and the spirit world. So it's a combination of those two religions. Um, there are about 2 million people in the Yao people group. Um, they have a tribal lifestyle that centers around a village, like with the, you know, the huts that you can picture in Africa. They have chiefs in their village that do the governing and the day-to-day -day life. Uh, they mostly farm for their living, and that's just subsistence farming mostly to feed themselves and hope for a little bit to sell. Um, but poverty and like challenges with health care are a big problem. Um, most people are not literate, cannot read, and so the teaching centers, centers around oral stories and that type of thing. And moving on, 
Um, so a summary of what the Millers, who we're going to join, have done for the past 17, 18 years is they lead weekly discipleship groups in the villages for whoever is open to hearing. And he has developed over 200 chronological Bible lessons in their language. So it starts at creation and goes all the way through Christ and then into Christian living through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Um, and there are some established believers there, so they're also focusing now on the leader training and discipleship and development, so those people can go and start new groups in other villages. Next slide. And this is a picture of our family in Malawi last year. The man standing next to me with the orange shirt, his name is Madalizo, and he is also part of the, the BIC team there in Mangochi, and he is a Yao person, so he's native to that people group, so his language is wonderful, and he's a really strong believer. Next one. And then Estel's going to talk. I'd like to just share a little bit this verse. First Peter 3.15, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to... <laughs> she's wanting a drink, and she goes to a drink, so she's thirsty. <laughs> So always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who wants to give you the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. And I, I think this is a good verse to kind of share about how Doug and Barb first began to do ministry. They put Christ first in their life, and then they looked for opportunities for the Holy Spirit to leave to share. So their first uh, group was started from a waitress that opened them up to come to the village. And when they did come to the village, they made sure and do it in love and in gentleness, and they would go and talk to the chief and make sure that it's okay to start a start a Bible study. Um, just a couple quick thoughts. Um, it says, put our heart, put, revere Christ as Lord. I know um, many of us want Christ to be our Savior, but do we allow Christ to be our Lord in our lives? Do we make give him full authority? Do we put him center? All right. And then just to end up, um, our next steps were kind of, a little bit at the beginning of our fundraising journey, and um, we do hope to leave for Malawi this coming fall. So like in October of 2019 is our goal. And so we are responsible for fundraising 70% of our annual living costs, which is about $65,000, and then BIC provides the other 30%. So we're thankful for that um, provision that they give on that. And then we also are asking for prayer partners um, to, to pray for us in this. And so we will have some information at the back. We have some flyers with more detailed information as well as a newsletter sign up. So we'll try to send out about monthly emails with information and prayer requests and praises. Um, so that's where we're at right now is just uh, fundraising and telling people our story and asking for prayer. So we appreciate it. Thank you.